Brethren, it's great to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. When the Lord gives you strength, they say not only would you fly like eagles, you would not be tired, yes. neither would you be weary, because the Lord would have fed you and given you everything that you need in order to prosper. He is indeed a great God. Amen. When I read over the chapters and the books that were for this day's uh, service and sermon, I was wondering and pondering where to begin because uh, you take it from the front, you land the same place. You take it from the back, you land the same way because both passages were really, really talking about the same thing, the wonderful works of God and how God can make things happen, uh, how he wants to make it happen in, even in an instant. So I want somebody to quickly open the uh, book of um, first Corinthians just read verses 1 to 4 for me uh, chapter 2 first Corinthians 2 go ahead first Corinthians 2 and I brethren when I came to you it says when I come to you this is Paul speaking it says I didn't come with with, with, with vain words or just words to entice you or of wisdom. But words of wisdom. Declaring unto you. Yes. The testimony of God. Yes, I was, I was here to tell you about God's and his works. For I determined not to know anything among you. It says, it's, it's, not, it's not because I want to find out just things that are in your mind. Save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Yes, I just want to talk to you about Jesus. And I was with you in the weakness. Thank you very much. I was with you when things were good and when things were not so good. And in fear? Yes. And in much trembling? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Now go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, just the uh, 13th verse. For this cause, yes. also thank we God yes. without season. We want to thank God without stopping because of his goodness, yes. Because when you received the word of God. See, when, when the word came to you of Christ and of, of the goodness of God. Which you heard of us. And you heard it through me, just a mortal person. You received, not, you received it not as the word of man. You didn't regard it as just the word coming out of my mouth, but you regard it as. But as it is in truth. As it is in truth, the word of God. And because you did so. Which effect effectually uh -huh. also in you that believe and as you, because you thank you very much because you received it as a true word of God things happened to you and not just things happening to you good things happened to you let's now go to Romans 10 quickly verse 17 Romans 10 verse 17 so then faith come by it says faith and because you've heard this word and you believed, and be only because you heard, and hearing by, by, by hearing by, by, the word of God. by the word of God. But I say, yes. Are they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth. Yes. And their words unto the ends of the world. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Faith, the word of God comes by hearing, and hearing by the word. So, what is the word for today? The story is very straightforward. The first uh, book that was read to us, which was Second Kings, number two, right? Mm -hmm. Chapter two, verses 19 to 25, that's the end. It takes a very simple, a very simple story of Elijah the prophet, correct? Yes. And what did Elijah do? <laughs> <coughs> Elisha didn't do anything. Elisha had just disengaged from his master. Now you all know the story of, of how Elijah was about to be taken up by the whirlwind. Yeah. He's only one of two people that were never buried on this earth, right? Yeah. And he, he says, listen, I'm about to go. But then you notice one thing, everywhere they seem to go to, because Elisha, I mean, Elijah was, I guess, hoping that Elisha was simply disappear 
because he, he had all of these places that he wanted to go to. He says, God has told me to go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, go to this place, go to that place. But Elisha always gave him the same answer. He says, listen, my boss, wherever you go, I will never leave you. Wherever you are going, I will never leave you. But one thing I was curious when I was reading the chapter is, is, is that whenever, wherever they went, there were prophets. A lot of prophets will come to him and tell him, say, listen, do you know that your master is about to be taken away from you today? But everywhere he went, the same prophecy was being given him. Right? And he says, oh, I know. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. But he stayed with his master. But what do we learn from that? I was about to, before I was to come up to this pulpit, I decided I wanted to use the men's room. And I wasn't even halfway walking there when a prophet has called me. And the word of God is straight like an arrow. There is no doubt about the word of God. But I heard the word of God. The, the, the way I was going before <laughs> became moot. Because it was, first of all, there was no time. And second of all, the word of God not only confirmed something that I already saw and prayed about, but I knew God was not doing this to me. You know, so sometimes when you hear the word of God and you say, well, if the word of God is true, whether you see a prophet in Japan, a one in China, the next one in, in Afghanistan, the words will be the same. So for Elisha, the words were coming wherever they went. Even in the last stop that they had, the prophets, the sons of the prophets stood afar to see what was going to happen to Elisha when Elijah left. But it so happened when he asked Elijah, you know, Elijah asked him, what will I, what do you want from me? He says, I want a double portion of your... Yeah, there is, I mean, I'm going, I'm going, this is only uh, aside, by the way. He said, well, you've asked something very difficult of me, something very hard. He said, well, nonetheless, if this happens, which means if you were to see me when I'm being taken up, the mantle in my hands will fall, and so it was. But before they got to this, this, this last destination, Elijah parted the waters, right? Yeah. And they went through the water. And on the way back, after Elijah was gone, now Elijah, of course, got the mantle and wanted to test the power to see, will this thing work? And it did. And then the, the, the witnesses who were far away and watching actually saw it happen. They said, oh, the power of Elijah is upon Elijah. Elijah. But then he proceeded on to Jericho and he waited a while in Jericho. And that's where the first lesson of today basically started. Now, what happened there? The men of the city of Jericho came unto Elijah and said, Well, you know, you, as you can see by yourself, everything is beautiful. As I can see you, you are very well adorned. You are beautiful all before God. Everything is good. He said, But on the inside, the water of the city is not as good as what you can see on the outside. So I know that as you sit here, as you come before the Lord today, there's something inside of you that bothers you, that troubles you. But you have come to the right place. You have come. See, the, the men of um, Jericho could have done one thing. They could have gone to their friends and start gossiping. Ah, which kind of, what, 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 who is the king self of this village? Who is the leader of this, uh, of this town? They're not doing a good job. No, I mean, let's, instead of going to the right place to get their problems resolved, they will start telling other people that will only make their problems worse. You don't want, when you have a problem, you have a situation, you take it to God. Discussing it and giving it to other people, well, unless, you, if you have not figured out the right answer, then you will just tell people so that they can either have pity with you, or simply just say, oh, well, you've got a lot of trouble, more than I do, or whatever it is that you're trying to receive, but certainly not the answer that you need. But the men of Jericho did the right thing. Like David said, David says, he says, I will go to a rock higher than I, in Psalm 61, verse 2. I will go to the rock higher than I. Not somebody who already, somebody who's got this situation under control, 
who will tell me exactly what I need to do to resolve my issues. And they went to Elisha, and Elisha, obviously, what did he say? He says, bring me a new cruise, bring me a new bowl, a new plate. He says, take salt and put in it. Mm -hmm. Now, do you see what happens in Celestial Church? Because a lot of people would want to be out there telling you that the things we do here are only symbolic, that they make no sense. Why should somebody use a handkerchief? Why do you need a candle? Why do you need a salt and, and sugar to pray? The salt and sugar will not deliver you. The candle is that will not deliver you, but when you faith and believe and the symbolism of it makes everything come to fruition. It is the belief. Elisha went to the source of the water and put salt yes. in there. Now, before that, remember that water that they were drinking was causing the women to not be able to hold their pregnancies. Mm -hmm. So children were no longer being formed. Nothing good was happening. The land was barren. Even though on the face, on the surface, everything looked good. I've had prophets tell me and prophetesses tell me, hey, everything looks good on the outside, but I know that you've got an issue inside. And it is a fact, like you, like me, like everybody else here. But God, who understands our situations, knows exactly what troubles us. Before we even get to tell him our situation, he knows. That's what happened in the second lesson that was read to us, when Jesus saw the, the impotent man at the, by the pool of Bethsaida. He, he didn't have to come to Jesus to say what was his problem. Jesus saw him and knew that he had a problem. He had been there for a long time. Now, you're saying, well, if God knows my problem, if God sees my problem, if I go to the right source, why don't I get my prayers answered then? Well, it is simple. I mean, I know you've heard it, you've heard it said before that, hey, all you have to do is wait patiently for the Lord, right? You hear that sermon every day. Wait on the Lord, the Lord's time is the best and all that. There is nothing wrong with God's timing. Mm -hmm. God has already written everything by time. But our, our handiwork, when we go to the wrong direction, when we go to the wrong rock, when we, go, we don't go to the higher rock to seek God, when we go to Bethel and Gilgal to seek the oracles, that is when our prayers don't get answered. Don't you understand that? We, we know that, I mean, uh, I think Amos 3 uh, verse 2 says something, don't, don't go to Bethel, don't go to Gilgal, just seek God. Don't, don't go to the shrine, don't go to the oracles. Um, Abraham erected a shrine in Bethel after God led him out of his, his homeland. And of course, Joshua, when they crossed over into Jerusalem, erected a, a shrine in, in Gilgal to commemorate uh, the, the Israelis, I mean, the Israelites arriving uh, in, the, in the promised land. But he says, don't even go there, but you, you can seek God and seek this direct God in the right way he should be found. And that's why you have to congratulate yourself for being in the presence of God today. And I said to you before, you may be looking at the words that are coming out of my mouth as just the words of a human being. Yes, they are the words of a human being, but I, I certainly am not speaking of myself or for myself. But certainly I know by the power and the healing power of God that every situation that confronts you that you think will not be, <laughs> cannot be resolved today, you will be surprised. I want you to put your heart with God. Yes. Early this morning, yes. hallelujah. hallelujah. I said I had some double duties. So I was tired. I went to sleep early. I wanted to study. I said, let me go to sleep. And I slept early. Five o'clock on the door, I woke up. <laughs> I wanted to go back to sleep. I said, ah, that thing is not so deep. I said, I studied. I did everything already. I said, let me sleep some more. But as I lay down, <laughs> no. My mind was troubled because I was kept being shown different, 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 different visions. And at exactly 5.24, I could not take it anymore. I got up. But in between 5 and 5.24, something happened. I had a vision. Okay, which I just said to you that a prophet has just confirmed. And I saw it very, very clear. Very, very, very clear. It was a piece of paper, something was written on it, I read it and whatever, whatever. And right away I got into prayer. And 
I have come to church. When I woke up at 524, I just went down to the study and I was until whenever. I said, God is going to keep me awake no matter what. But the prophet has called me and confirmed it. I want you to believe that God is still in the business. God is not in the delaying business. When, when he says timetable, it's not in a time. It's timetable does not mean, well, to make you wait. That's not it. If there is a situation that you are asking God for, it has not come to, to true. I don't want you to blame a brother. Don't blame a sister. Don't blame a friend. Don't blame every family. But you have to say, look at yourself and say, hey, it's me. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. I'm the one standing before you in need of prayer, in need of a miracle. When the men of Jericho looked at the situation of their land, they said, we've got a problem. They went to the right source. And right away, what did the prophet of God pronounce? He said, there will be no more death, no more burning. And he said, it shall be so <coughs> till, it is still so till this day, isn't it? <coughs> if you don't believe these things, we went, I happened to uh, go on a trip to, uh, with the, to the Holy Land, and we went to uh, Elisha's well. The water flows. The water is plentiful. You will look at the land, it's already, there are not too many, too many houses packed together. There are not too many vegetation or anything like that, but it's, 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 a, it's a reddish, uh, barrenish land. But you see people doing a lot of it. And then you get to this water place, and the water is just plentiful, plentiful. and flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing. You wonder, gee, what a miracle. But in the midst of the desert, God can provide anything. And God has made provisions. I am not speaking of just, I'm not saying words just to make you um, feel that it is true when it is not true. If it weren't true, then God is a liar. But God is not a liar, is it? Okay. So the same truth, let's scoot over to the second lesson now. You see, in, this bo in both of these lessons, there is the imagery of water, correct? There was the water that was not producing good things, that was making the women lose their babies, crops were not growing. And then now there is the pool at bedside, which, as you heard described, at certain seasons, people will go there to get healed. Whatever your situation, your infirmity, you go, you go into the water after the angels trouble the water, you go in there, you get healed. When you come to Celestia, you get prayed for. They say, uh, they want you to go take Omiya Jipon, right? Yes. yes. Omiya Jipon, if you don't know, is um, <laughs> early, early, early morning water that when you take it, it's, it's undisturbed means it has not been no not too many other than the the natural forces and natural power not no humans have defiled it as of yet take the water it's 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 symbolism and let me tell you based on your fate it works and it works and it works yes. now did you you know the story of the woman of the uh, man of the poor by the uh, bad side remember jesus healed them correct yes, yes. But, but Jesus asked them, he says, uh, would, would you do, I mean, basically, in other words, do you want to be healed? <laughs> so it is a matter of your will. Now, you also notice when Jesus healed him, he didn't need the water anymore. Jesus simply said, well, do you want to be healed? So it is a matter, we, I, we can sit here and talk from day to night. If you don't believe that God is in a miracle working business, that whatever you, you are desiring in your heart that is a problem for you now, that is solvable by God, if you don't believe it, it would never happen. Yes. But if you sit there and don't say, look at these words coming from this sinful man. Didn't I see him doing this yesterday? Didn't I see him doing that? Please don't think about me. I have my own cup to bear. And God is going to judge me on my own. But these words are not my words. But if you don't believe them as being the words of God, they have no effect. But if you believe them, I don't care what the situation confronts you. Whether you have a helper, 
the dumb man that said, he, what was the reason for not being healed all these years? He said he had no help and nobody to put him in the pool. But Jesus simply asked him, do you want to be healed? And he says, take up your cloak and walk. And then I want the naysayers, all the, the, the people that are saying, why do you go to voice of grace? Is that only God? They didn't God make the entire world? Isn't God all over the place? The people that will say that to you, they say, why are you carrying your, on a Sunday, on a Sabbath? Why are you doing that? Uh, the, but the man said, ah, I better not be me. Oh. He said, it's not me. Oh. It's the person that him that told me to carry him. Carry him. I, I said, ah. They said, we want to find out who that person is. That person, I don't know. <laughs> when God commands you to do something, he, he backs you up with the yes, power. To be not only to be made whole, but to be guiltless, Hallelujah. even in the eyes of men. Hallelujah. The judges of this world are under the control of God. Yes. The Bible says kings, they are like water and rivers in the hands of God. Yes. God makes their heart to flow whichever direction he Jesus. wants to. So I judge this when you when you are you got a situation you say well how can I do this how will this happen I I know I've never heard it happen before but then you appear you say nothing and something big happens I don't want to talk about me today but I want to tell you uh, when I was growing up a little bit we um, when I after secondary school you know how things go in Nigeria whatever your if you're like Dami and I, you, you only passed English well, you didn't get, you didn't get an A. You didn't get an A in, in math. Well, I got a P at least. I don't know what time it got. <laughs> you got a P in math. You can still go somewhere. You can still become something. But in Nigeria, if you're not all around, you're not freaking bio, you're not good in physics, chemistry altogether, you don't have A's, you are sitting somewhere after school and nothing, nothing happens. Unless, of course, your father knows the, finance, the vice chancellor and the vice chancellor knows the whatever. Nothing happens for you. So I was sitting there blowing what they call NFA. No future ambition. Jam continues to jam. You know, you do jam, you do Y, you do GC, nothing, GC, nothing. They say there's Odu. You got the Odu? The, by the time I had actually aced all my papers, I had no need for them no more. Because I was already here. Oh, yeah. But here's what happened. Everybody I knew had somebody that would help them. That they, well, we had some people, but I just, my spirit just doesn't like going to people to beg or to ask. It's not because, it's, it's not because of pride. It's just not agreeable with my spirit. It, it, in, even in terms of religion, I always beg to go. I said, when people preach to me when I was younger, I said, listen, I said, I said, who spoke to you? They said, God spoke to me. I said, you know what? I think I want that same God to talk to me. I think I'm good enough for God to talk to me. So the same way when he came to ask him for help, I said, well, somebody help that person. Yeah, okay, God help that person. I want God to help me too. I don't want to have to go through somebody. Uh -huh. But we went around town, everybody, when you ask them, what are you, ah, kilo shele, kilo shele, what are you doing? What are you, what are you up to? And, ah, mufet travel, mufet travel. Mufet travel was a vocation. I want to travel. Because it was the golden ticket to anything good that you got. But when I looked around, I had no helper but God. Uh -huh. God sent a man who was a Jehovah's Witness. We, we, we talked. He spoke English extremely well. He, he, he was an English professor. Very rare for any of those here. One those people who speak English very well. But he spoke English <laughs> extremely well. And I loved people like that because I, I wanted to learn from them. But I, instead of trying to convert me to be his religion, he actually he simply said to me when... If Christians are on one side and Muslims are on one side and God comes today, so where would you be? Christian. No, I was nowhere at that time. Mm -hmm. So it was a conversation he had with me and it really pricked my heart. Immediately, I met one auntie. I said, Auntie, I want to go to your church. Mm -hmm. This is how I came to Celestia. But the, the issue was this I had no helper. And I was praying to God. I gave up most, if not all, of the vices I had. And I had some. <laughs> I gave them up. I was in, there was no service that I didn't participate in. And even in those services, let me tell you, there were some things that wanted to derail me. 
but I stood firm and I stood fast. So those things will happen to you, they will happen to me. But God saw me through miraculously when it was not supposed to be. I have friends today that were good friends that have not talked to me ever since because they didn't believe how God miraculously helped me that had no helper. If the infirm man at the pool of Bethsaida was helped by him believing that he can be helped and went to the right source, if you have any situation, any condition, don't dismay, don't despair because you have no help. Because the Lord is your helper. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 For you, Hebrews 12, <coughs> For ye are not come unto the man that might be touched, and are born with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. For ye are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heaven in Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect and Amen. to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant yes. and to the blood of the sprinkling that speak a better thing than that, that of Amen. 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 thank you my brother let your conversations be without covetousness <laughs> and be content with such things as you have for he had said I will never leave thee nor forsake thee so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Amen. 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 Psalm 55. Amen. Oh, Lord. <laughs> to, to cast your burdens. Yes. Unto to Jesus. Jesus. Yes. For he cares for you. Yes. Amen. I don't want you to fail in the moment of temptation. And what are the moments of temptation? The moments of temptation, things will get so hard. Mm -hmm. And you start wondering, oh, is this possible? Is that possible? <coughs> there is nothing. And I say absolutely nothing impossible with God. No, no. You don't, you are not alone in your situation. You are not alone in your condition. There is no condition that afflicts oh, no. you that God cannot take care yes. of. You see, all of those situations are things that the world has tried to put there. Sometimes when they trick us, we get involved in things that we shouldn't be involved in. And that's where we see and that's where we get delayed. Sometimes, and that's why, that's the only way the world is able to get into us. The world has no power over us when they say i don't care whether it's remote control or direct control any control if you don't allow it it never can come near you yes. it never but the little delays we have are the ones that we allow into us for if we stand firm in god you've heard it before numbers 22 where balak wanted to curse the children of Israel. He employed the services of Balaam, a prophet. Balaam did the most he could. He actually tried to put a curse on them. He did, but it didn't work. And then he said to him, he says, oh, he says what have you done to me? He says, this thing I meant to be a curse, but you've made it Blessing. A blessing for these people instead. Yes. So how come? And this is how your enemies will be looking at you and wondering. Yes. All the traps that they have set for you. <laughs> eh? It will not only catch them, but it will destroy them. Amen. The thought of their hearts of why these things have not happened to you. Oh, they are look, they are expecting you to fall, but you are rising yes. and you are shining yes. and you are making headway yes. and you are you, you are you are prospering. Yes. It is not by your power, but the power of God. Yes. God has reversed the course. He has made the problems to be solutions. He has made the crying to be laughter. Yes. The Lord is His name. Yes. I'm not reintroducing him to you. You already know him. Yes. He lives in you. Yes. And that's 
why God tells you to guard your heart, for in your heart lies all of the issues of the heart. For if your heart believes that the Lord is with you, that the Lord can make a way for you, that this problem is no longer a problem, that you've got a solution instead, then nothing, no wall of Jericho can stop you from reaching the point that God wants to take you to. Because God has not made you a servant. He has not made you a slave. He has made you to prosper. I am not telling you sweet words just to tell you sweet words. God is able. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Excuse me. Mark 10. Yeah. Verse yeah. 27. Mark 10. Verse 27. With 27. God, everything is possible. With God, everything, everything is possible. possible. But I say, brethren, hold on steadfastly yes. to this faith. Do not waver. Do not shake. When we shake and we waver, those are the delays. When you come and you say, oh, God does not hear the prayer anymore over there. Well, let me go away for a while and, and do whatever I want or go to a place where I can do it as the way I want it. Those are the problems. But if you stay and hold on steadfastly to God, there is nothing that he cannot do. There is nothing he will not do. Amen. The people that you think that you need to lift you are not the people that are going to lift you. Mm -hmm. God will, with his own hand, lift you Amen. up. He will make a way for you. Amen. If you are sick, <laughs> God made your body. Amen. It isn't just the doctor. The doctor is nothing but an instrument. I mean, you cannot have a headache and go to a mechanic and say, give me a pill for my headache. When you have a situation, you go to God and you believe in your heart that God is healing you and is making a way right now. Yes. He will make a way. Amen. It shall be so unto all of us. Amen. 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 Amen.